It took two long days for jurors to decide if Hannah Overton was guilty of murder in the salt poisoning death of Andrew Bird, a four-year-old she was trying to adopt. Finally, a verdict. We the jury find the defendant Anna Ruth Overton guilty of the offense of capital murder as alleged in the indictment. I just kind of broke down. And I just stared out a window for, I don't know, probably about an hour. Hannah was given a life sentence. Her husband, Larry, later pled no contest to negligent homicide in return for just five years probation. Okay. Yeah. Marie, some food. You want some food? Daddy. Hold on, Bastion. Okay, hey, guys. Everybody for a year now, me, Larry's please. basically been a single father of five kids. And once a month, he packs them into the family van and heads north. We'll go see Mom tomorrow. We're going to drive up there tonight. It's a 300-mile drive, but no one's complaining, because for two hours, they'll get to visit their mom at this Texas prison. What are those visits like? They sing to me, and we pray together, and, and then they go home, and they usually leave. All of us usually leave in tears. And as supporters continue to wonder, how was she convicted? Do you think she's guilty? Did the jury fully understand what the judge was asking them to decide? To find Hannah guilty, jurors had to believe either of two scenarios, that Hannah force-fed Andrew Bird salt, knowing it would kill him, or that she neglected to get medical help fast enough, knowing that he was dying. All 12 jurors agreed with the second scenario. She didn't get the help Andrew needed. We sat down with two of them. I don't believe it was her intention to to kill him, um, but I just feel that if Andrew would have gotten help sooner, he he would probably be alive today. But I mean, we're never going to know that. I mean, and then she eventually killed him because she didn't seek medical help. But both jurors may have missed a key issue: Did Hannah know Andrew was dying, or that it would kill him if she didn't get help? Do you think that she intentionally withheld medical attention? in order to kill that child? That's something that we'll never know. I mean, we'll just never know that because... We heard a lot, a number of times you saying, we'll never know. And so it raises the question of reasonable doubt. Is there any reasonable doubt in this case? I don't think there is more. These two doctors, both experts in the case, one for the prosecution, the other for the defense, feel Hannah Overton was wrongly convicted. For the first time on camera, both men spoke to 2020, revealing evidence jurors never got to hear at trial. I was stunned when I heard that she had been given um, capital murder. I was just at a loss for words. Dr. Edgar Cortez, the same pediatrician who treated Andrew at the ER and later consulted with the prosecution, says he always believed Andrew's death was accidental, not murder. I told the prosecutor, I hope you're going to come forward with a charge other than capital murder. I don't think Hannah intentionally tried to kill Andrew Bird. Cortez says he disagrees with the prosecution's portrayal of Andrew as a perfectly healthy child. He saw speech and developmental problems back in 2005. The only physician that treated Andy while he was alive and who was aware of problems that he had was me. And I think that testimony might have given the jury an understanding that perhaps he was not a totally normal child. But neither the jury nor the defense heard those opinions. And that's the cornerstone of Hannah's current appeal. Just to be clear, you're not being paid by the Overton defense team. Absolutely not. I wouldn't take a penny from them. I want the right thing to be done. I believe that when you give a jury the truth, it should be the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I cannot control what his perceptions are. I cannot most certainly control what he is saying now or not saying, but I feel very confident that I did the right thing in um, presenting the evidence and having her convicted. 
The prosecutor says she doesn't recall Cortez expressing doubt about Hannah's intent. Sounds very disingenuous to me. That was very clear from day one and very forceful as to my opinions. But Cortez isn't alone. There's someone else who believes the case against Hannah is flawed. Dr. Michael Moritz is a leading expert on salt poisoning at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. I don't think there was any evidence at all uh, that she did this. Moritz's testimony also wasn't heard by the jury, but he believes he knows what happened to Andrew that day. I think he was in one of his feeding binges, and he was having a tantrum, and he was unsupervised for a brief period of time, and I believe that he ingested a large amount of salt. An outsider would say, why would a child eat that amount of salt? A normal child would not, but a child with pica would. Dr. Moritz has researched extensively about salt poisoning and its connection to pica. He's even published an article citing a distinctive pattern. When I pulled all the cases of salt poisoning in the literature, they all fit the same profile. Children within that age group of two to six years of age in foster care from abusive homes or with behavioral problems who had history of pica, who by all accounts appeared to have voluntarily ingested large amounts of sodium. But the crucial issue remains. Did Hannah know the child was dying that day? I think she was angry, enraged, was wanting to punish him and hurt him, and then realized, oh my gosh, I've really hurt him. The prosecution stands by their case, but even the lead investigator seemed to waver on the logic of it all. Why would somebody who's just poisoned their child admit to all of it? Okay, I don't know. I don't think she woke up today and said, okay, today is October 2nd, I am going to kill Andrew. I think that she was trying to be change his behavior. Capital murder, by my understanding, is not intent to change his behavior, it's intent to kill. You're changing his behavior. If you're, and she's going to be able to tell you the, the law part. So you're absolutely convinced that she withheld medical treatment in an effort to yes. kill him? Yes. I sleep well at night because I know that the right thing happened here. Do you think Hannah Overton knew her child was dying? Uh, no, I don't believe she did. I think most people would never suspect salt poisoning since it's something that's sufficiently rare that probably very few pediatricians or emergency room in the country have ever encountered. Daddy? Tonight, Hannah Overton sits in her Texas prison, hoping her case will be overturned. Meanwhile, 300 miles away, five kids and a devoted husband pray for her return. I miss my mommy. She's in jail. Why is she in jail? They stepped out. She did something wrong that she didn't do. Do you regret trying to adopt Andrew? No. I wouldn't give up that four months with him. He had a mommy and daddy and brothers and sisters, what he called his forever family. I wouldn't take that away because we've had to go through a lot of pain since then. It's not fair to him or to us. Did Hannah Overton get a fair trial? In two weeks, a panel of judges will begin to consider whether she deserves a new trial. But a final decision could take months. We'll be following the developments in Hannah's story on our webpage at abcnews.com.